This is Framingham Fan to Fan. Hi, I'm Dave Hornfisher, a Framingham sports fan, and I'm excited to welcome you to AFTV's Sports Interview Show. We focus on sports in Framingham. Our goal is to give greater visibility to local sports as a vehicle for building community. Whether you're a four-year-old in the youth soccer program, the quarterback at Framingham State, a sports program manager, or a sports fan like me. Today, the subject is going to be youth soccer, the amazing soccer program in Framingham that involves over a thousand youth, children, young adults, whatever we're going to call them. <laughs> Our guests are Brian Jones, president of the Framingham United Soccer Club, and Candace Donahue, president of their Boosters Club. Brian and Candace, welcome to Framingham Fan to Fan. It's great to have you here and to hear a little more about this amazing soccer program. Uh, Brian, why don't you just kick it off and give me a little bit of history of the of the uh, uh, of the club and sure. Thanks for having us on, David. Yeah. This is very exciting to be here. Uh, Framingham United Soccer Club uh, was founded in 1975 <laughs> uh, by a few individuals and in, uh, Framingham residents. It has since grown over the years and, and gotten stronger and bigger, as you, as you can imagine. Uh, uh, there's over 1,000 children every season, uh, hopefully creeping up to 1,200 children uh, this year in the club, from four-year-olds, both boys and girls, up through grade eight, uh, so about 14 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have the ability for high school players to come during the uh, spring season and play, as, as well as the fall season. So the, the club, uh, we have two seasons, uh, it usually starts the first Saturday after Labor Day in September. It runs for about 10 weeks uh, through mm -hmm. early November. And in the spring, it usually starts the second weekend in April and runs through just right before the end of school uh, in June. Mm -hmm. Uh, so people can can take off for those summer vacations. And you don't play when there's snow on the ground. No, we don't play when there's snow on the ground. So that usually delays the start of the season in April. Uh, we have a great partnership with the town of Framingham Park and Rec, uh, uh, with uh, field usage at many many of the fields around town, usually school uh, fields. Mm -hmm. And we also um, have what's called the Merchant Road Soccer Facility. Uh, which is a great facility, again, in partnership with the town that we maintain uh, and mm -hmm. keep for our, our club to mm -hmm. play on. Okay. Uh, well, it's, I, you know, I'm, a, I'm a parent and I've got a four-year-old. I don't at this, my, at this age, obviously, but say I did. God forbid. Yeah. Uh, but if I did, and I uh, want to get her started in youth soccer. She, she's a four-year-old. She's, what, pretty active, or maybe you get some kids even that aren't very active that their parents feel could use the uh, exposure to being energetic and out there on the field. Uh, talk, talk a little bit about kind of how, how that starts. So. It's very easy. Uh, yeah. So you go to FUSC.org, our homepage. And Once again, that was FUSC.org. That's right. FUSC.org. Gee, that's probably going to come out backwards on television. <laughs> yeah, right. Because <laughs> that's my best YMCA, okay? <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, you can register right online. Uh -huh. And if you have any difficulty, we have volunteers to help. Uh, you just shoot uh, okay. the registrar an email. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically, you'll sign up for uh, one season. So if you mm -hmm. wanted to sign up for this season, okay. you go online and sign up your child, fill out the form. Uh, the, f the fee is under $100 mm -hmm. uh, in that age group. And it's a 10-week season where it's instruction through clinics. We have a dedicated mm -hmm. professional coach that comes every Saturday. Uh, the field we use for that age group is the Barberry uh, Elementary School right in the back okay. there. So it's easy to get to, mm -hmm. easy in and out. And uh, the children have a great time. It's a, it's a great mm -hmm. uh, thing to see four- uh -huh. and five-year-olds right. out there learning, uh -huh. you know, kicking learning the ball how to kick in the, the right ball. goal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. We really focus just like on other sports, like, uh -huh. uh, say, hockey. You need uh -huh. to learn how to skate before right. they sure, hand you a stick. Yeah. So uh, in that, we focus in that age group on, on, on controlling the mm -hmm. ball, uh -huh. uh, dribbling the yeah. ball, uh -huh. uh, and having fun. Yeah. Uh, that's that's mm -hmm. what it's really all about. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it's pretty simple. Well, well you, uh, you mentioned the cost, and, uh, and since you're the head of the Booster Club here, I, I, I suspect that your, uh, your, your role is to help keep those costs down somehow. And, uh, it is. Yeah. That's, that's one of the main um, functions of the Boosters Program. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of fundraising throughout the year and sometimes even in the summer um, to keep that tuition down mm -hmm. um, so everybody gets to play. Mm -hmm. Do you have any, any events coming up in the fall here? That's 
Uh, Before well, Thanksgiving, so? We don't have anything. Well, we have the soccer fair, mm -hmm. uh, which is for our in-town kids. Um, and basically what it is is that uh, Merchant Field Road, as Brian mentioned, um, which is Framingham's um, soccer facility. Mm -hmm. Merchant, that, that's have, down in South Framingham, down past the prison, past the that, Dessa. Past that's there. correct. And yep. have, there's what, five or six fields, I understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful new. facility, yeah. mm -hmm. um, well maintained. Mm -hmm. Are they grass fields? Yep, yeah. all grass mm -hmm. fields. Uh -huh. And what we do is we invite all of the in town teams there, and it's a lot, of, it's a lot like a tournament um, atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And we have food, and we have um, games, other games, and uh -huh. you know, a face painter and stuff like uh -huh. that. So it really brings Framingham United together as a community. Okay. Um, that's so that's terrific. one of the things that Boosters likes uh -huh. to do. And that's held when again? That is um, September 24th. Okay. So it's a Sunday. Okay. Yep. And yeah, all, it's usually the last. Uh -huh. It's like the, the last, last Sunday, Sunday of September. September. Uh -huh. Yep. Great. Yep. And all uh -huh. in-town teams are invited. Uh -huh. um, and it's a really good day. It's a great day. Uh -huh. um, all the volunteers come out. Um, we get to watch games that we probably couldn't watch otherwise because uh -huh. we're out watching our kids sure. at different fields. Uh -huh. right. um, so it's uh -huh. a lot of fun. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, a program like this obviously has to have a lot of parents' involvement. Uh, it, it probably is coaches. I mean, every how many teams would you? And a thousand students, thousand participants. That's like at least fifty teams, and yep, maybe a, maybe a hundred. About a hundred teams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, and so that's a lot of coaches, and maybe assistant coaches even. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think you mentioned to me before that that's how both of you guys started, right? Is yeah, that, that's that's yeah. right. And no. and let me just say it again that this is an all volunteer club. Mm -hmm. So from my position down to uh, uh, a parent who might volunteer to help out at the soccer fair mm -hmm. or our Memorial Day soccer tournament mm -hmm. uh, that we have uh, every year in the spring. Um, uh, the whole board itself are volunteers. Every coach is a volunteer coach. No one gets paid. Right. So, mm -hmm. uh, you, you pay the referees? So the referees get paid uh -huh. the, uh, for, the travel, for the travel te uh -huh. uh, teams that we have, which uh -huh. is uh, f you know, fourth grade yeah. and above. Yeah. Uh, we, we pay into the the bays, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh -huh. Okay, but anyway, but the organization itself is mm -hmm. all all volunteer. All volunteers. And you're the president for like what 20 years, I understand. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> they have term limits. So, yeah. so we do. Our charter indicates that the president is one of the few positions that has a two-year term limit. Okay. So right. uh, okay. and every other board member. Just one two-year term limit. Wow. Yeah, that's right. Only our national. So Congress was like that. Yeah, so you have a two-year term limit, and then you serve for two more years as a past president okay. to help mentor yeah. the, uh -huh. uh, the current president mm -hmm. and the board. But each year, uh, we, we solicit uh, applications from anyone mm -hmm. in town or any mm -hmm. parent mm -hmm. uh, to be a board member. Mm -hmm. uh, another position that's critical to getting to, to operating the club are age directors. Mm -hmm. And Candace uh, uh, served as an age director for many years. Uh, it's instrumental for, for every age group from pre-KK up through uh, seventh and eighth grade. So that's how many groups? Uh, is that about what ten groups from four through fourteen or sixteen, or maybe mm -hmm. it's more than ten even? That's right, and it's yeah. girls and boys. Uh -huh. and boys. So, okay. Well, so. the pre-KK is co-ed. Mm -hmm. Every okay. other age group uh -huh. from first to eighth so, grade. So, what does an age director do? Um, <laughs> basically, the age director um, builds the teams. Oh, okay. Based on everybody that's registered, um, split all the kids up into teams. Do you try to do have some ability test on there? Do you have tryouts? And nope. No? Not for in town. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. For travel, yes. That's okay. kind of sure. a whole we'll, different we'll, we'll beast. We'll get to that later. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> um, um, so um, the kids register. So my four-year-old gets registered and she's placed on a team? Yes. And, with and, and, Coach and Brian. Okay. Who, uh, so the age director is responsible for building the team, finding the coach, mm -hmm. and then building a schedule. Okay. Um, and communicating that with the coaches. And you decide how many teams you're going to have. How many teams and, you're going right to have based on how many kids and, and right we have now registered. You have about how many teams at the four year old level? Or the at the four year old level, or at pre K, a, we are yeah. at 16 teams. Okay, that's a lot. That's yeah, okay. I believe. So, so, yeah. so that's a big So there's piece of about the um, eight to 10 yeah. players on each uh -huh. team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then by age eight or nine, you have about how many teams? Or, or 10 or somewhere in that range? So uh, uh, on the board, usually four or five on each, yeah. for each yeah. okay. uh, boys yeah. and girls. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so yeah, and so this this requires a lot of facilities and a lot of fields. Mm -hmm. And uh, and again, I mean, I can't uh, emphasize it enough. Volunteers, uh, right. Volunteers to help, mm -hmm. you know, because it's you know it's another thing to do. Yeah. But oh, I think yeah. the the it's with without the volunteers to do this work. 
um, the kids wouldn't be able to learn the and, game of soccer and, and play and, the game and of soccer. And you get some support from the town in managing your fields and mowing the grass or uh, getting them limed or whatever else they have to do. Or, yeah, we have or, a great... Or lined, lined and limed. Yes. <laughs> the, I cannot emphasize enough how great the, uh -huh. the Park and Rec's uh, department uh -huh. is and the partnership that we uh -huh. have with them is uh -huh. tremendous. They do a lot of the field, a lot of the, mm -hmm. the maintenance of the fields that, again, aren't Merchant, it's not Merchant Road that we right. play on. Uh, they do a lot of the field lining, and then for our Memorial Day tournament, we wouldn't be able to do the tournament mm -hmm. without them. Mm -hmm. They line all the fields, they uh -huh. help us coordinate. We play at the high school, we usually have a few different locations that we play uh -huh. at during that yeah. tournament wow. where we get mm -hmm. 150 or so teams really? to play during that weekend. Yeah. Well, when was that again? It's uh, over Memorial Day weekend, so it starts oh, oh, on- in April. Yeah, yeah it starts I mean, on in a, May. In yeah. May, yeah. so it starts mm -hmm. on a Friday night, usually uh -huh. we kick, out, kick off at Bowditch with a few games. Mm -hmm. And then it's Saturday and Sunday, and then mm -hmm. we don't we don't have games Monday, so people can enjoy oh, yeah. that. Don't you also have some, some other tournament down at uh, at Fuller School? Or am I oh, that is one of the locations. Oh, that's one of the locations yeah. for, for so that. So Galvani yeah. Fuller is Galvani. one of our okay. locations right. as okay. well. Okay, yeah, because I remember seeing that when I was there once. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's let's get into so so we talked a little bit about the uh, younger program, and I guess the focus there is probably more on teaching, right, and getting skill development, and probably less so than competition and that. But when you get to the older ages, which begins at about what age? Uh, uh, for the for the for, travel for, for the travel, travel teams, program. Yeah. Does that begin about age? Uh, or is it nine? nine third or grade. Yep. Eight, third eight, grade. Nine. Uh huh. Okay. Yep. So so it, it becomes a little more skill based at that point, and you have tryouts for different teams and. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the emphasis is always on continuing to learn uh, the game and playing the game right, respecting mm -hmm. the game uh, a, as well, but. Uh, it becomes a we're trying to place the children where they are most comfortable and fit the best mm -hmm. in terms of teams mm -hmm. and uh, the tryout process which runs in the spring usually started in May uh, and goes through June uh, usually has a few nights and we, we rank the kids mm -hmm. on uh, their athletic oh. ability their mm -hmm. tactical ability and their technical ability um, uh, with multiple evaluators and coaches oh. it's quite a process uh, so we, what goes we, into evaluating somebody's tactical ability at, uh, at 10 years old. Yeah, I mean, isn't that a pretty hard ability. thing? I mean, oh, it's very it yeah, is difficult. I mean, do you do that by watching them on the field playing a game, or did you interview them? Or so we, it, yeah, we start yeah. with really small sided games following uh -huh. the guidelines from U.S. Uh -huh. Youth Soccer and yeah. our the uh, Massachusetts Youth mm -hmm. Soccer Association. Uh, where small sided games and then build out from there to the appropriate mm -hmm. 7v7, 9v9 mm -hmm. level, right. or uh -huh. even 11v level yeah. that they're uh -huh. on. Uh, mm -hmm. But you can tell yeah. pretty quickly. So it's it, tactical, I would say, is decision making, right? Okay. So if you uh, uh, trap the ball and then immediately kick it away and, and do not okay. uh, move and pass the ball with, you know, as you can tell, soccer mm -hmm. is, uh -huh. and, and your, your tactical ability, mm -hmm. it, you know, yeah. isn't as great as someone who does that. The technical uh -huh. ability is a little easier. You know, mm -hmm. can you trap the ball? When you trap the ball, is it, does it stay at your foot? Do you strike the ball appropriately with both okay. feet? You know, can you um, uh, can you can you chip the ball? Can you receive the ball, uh -huh. or do you communicate with your teammates? So there's a lot okay. of different aspects right. that, uh -huh. that go into mm -hmm. uh, evaluating. And, and then the, the other one is just speed, <coughs> speed and athleticism, athleticism, athleticism in general. In general. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. your endurance, yeah. your speed, uh -huh. your quickness, mm -hmm. your right. foot, your foot uh -huh. quickness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as as people develop from age nine, if they're at, say they're at an elementary level in age. 10 or 11, by the time they get to 12 or 13, do they have an, is, is it re-ranked every year? So I yep. might move up if I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm yes. sort of ordinary at nine, I'm pretty good at 10, and by the time yes. I'm 13, I'm a star, I'm really racing all over the place. Huh? Yeah, that's yeah. the path uh -huh. we would love to uh -huh. help facilitate for, uh -huh. for children and the uh -huh. families, but you know, I think there's maturity happens at different times for different mm -hmm. uh, boys and girls and, and within, within, uh, within age groups. Mm -hmm. So you might have a child who is very athletic, as it, as it, more mature early mm -hmm. on and uh, seems to be always scoring the goals and then everyone <laughs> catches up and their technical ability right. might be better mm -hmm. so you know there's yeah. the whole as you can imagine with with yeah. close to 1200 children in the program close to <laughs> 600 or so or more in the travel side um, you know you, you've kind of see it all so you see all, all that's just things. a staggering number to me thinking of 600 uh, youth traveling from just Framingham I mean you, you must be the leading uh, Leading customer of the bus services or Uber or one of these days things these days. <laughs> you, you take, uh, that's a great uh, idea. Is, I bet is, you all the moms a, and dads all, out there that drive the kids around. Is, is this, all, this is all parental driven, right? So, Absolutely. So so the the travel teams then travel, and they travel as far as 
Natick or as far as Worcester or? Uh, so it's the Boston oh, Area Youth okay. Soccer Association, uh -huh. or Bays. Okay. So right. it's usually, I mean, typically within 495, mm -hmm. but you can, uh -huh. you, you know, so the trips to Rentham or mm -hmm. to Walpole. Yeah, or if you had to go to Braintree, Arlington. that's a pretty long ride. Yeah, yeah but yeah. it's still, I mean, but that's Newton, I mean, this isn't, my, my son was involved in youth hockey, so I have some yeah. some sense of that. And, uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so 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 this again is a big commitment on the teams of the on the big commitment of the parents to uh, uh, drive people to different sure. places and yeah. Uh, yeah. get them there and the uh, and and then you have all these tournaments. Uh, um, so so you you're really trying to run. So somebody well, I talked to about this. I said I don't know too much about this soccer league. I said well you know in many ways it's a learning it's a learning league. Is that a phrase that should kind of like you'd feel kind of works all the way through. I mean, is that one of your I, one of your main think, purposes? And I think that's a fair <coughs> that's a fair uh, mm -hmm. characterization. I mean, we're uh, we're an in town league that wants to make it accessible soccer accessible to everyone, mm -hmm. whether it's someone that just wants to go out and have fun mm -hmm. and he never touches the ball other than the mm -hmm. ten weeks out of the year <laughs> out of the season that yeah, the games right. are. To the player that uh, goes to uh, you know touches the ball mm -hmm. 365 days a year, so, uh, mm -hmm. because it's really about playing with their friends, right? I think so, that's what yeah, it's all so, about yeah. in building community. With, so when you put family. a team together, do you try to put teams together from a neighborhood, or if if I say uh, I want to play with yeah. Johnny, can, yeah. can I do that or? Or do you um, let that happen? The, Is this what yes, you do with the do. age directors? Yes, that's yeah. exactly right. Um, there's even on the registration form, there is a space where you can make comments or, um, you know, ask for special instructions. I, mm -hmm. you know, I want to play with my best friend, or you know, we carpool with the neighbor, so we need <laughs> right. to be, you know, on the same team type of mm -hmm. a thing. Um, we do absolutely everything we can to mm -hmm. accommodate all special requests. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, we just want the kids to have a good time right. and go outside and run around and kick the ball. But the sense of the the, the concept of an age director stops after you get to the uh, to the travel team level. No. No. Nope. Oh, really? No. Nope. There's okay. an age director for every oh, for age every, group. Okay. So yes. there, there might be at the nine year, the ten year old group, whatever, might have uh, ten travel teams. How many travel teams? You might. Uh, four five, nine years, yeah. so probably four on each. Oh, okay, four so boys, four, boys four, four girls. girls. Eight travel mm -hmm. teams that yeah. the uh, mm -hmm. age director would kind of oversee that Correct. a little bit. And, uh, and the parent who's a little upset because their child is on team A and not team B talks to you <laughs> first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or eventually, I should eventually, say. Eventually, yes. Eventually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, that yeah. all comes back down to tryouts. Uh, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah. And so if I can jump in there. Yeah. And the way it's supposed to work <laughs> is that the age director was supposed to be contacted first, but then we have boys and girls directors. Okay. Right? Yeah. So right. who okay. oversee and uh -huh. help manage right. the yeah. age director. It's in between the coaches and all that. And yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then ultimately, uh, it if comes somebody's up not to the happy president. with a coach on their team, they. Uh, uh, they, they, they come to the age director first. They should yep. come to yeah. the age director, and we encourage yeah. uh -huh. uh, families right. to do that because we, uh -huh. I, as uh, we've heard all sorts of stories. Again, there are volunteer coaches mm -hmm. that are balancing right. family and work sure. and everything else. Mm -hmm. and we have certain expectation for coaches. That's a tough it's, job. It's not exactly. It's not a job. You it just walk in. I was a little league right. manager for eight years, and I understand what yeah. that. Yep. What that involves. Yes. Yeah. No, but yeah. we encourage our, our families to reach out mm -hmm. to us and let right. us know if they're I mean, not. Sometimes it works with one family and not with another. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Oh, I love uh, coaching. I've coached my my own kids and other kids since uh, since my kids were uh, uh, four and five years old. And mm -hmm. this year, I'm an assistant coach on mm -hmm. a uh, uh, with my daughter's mm -hmm. uh, U14 or seventh uh -huh. and eighth grade team, which is. Uh, you, you hear a lot fun. of talk about concussions in football and. So somebody told me that there were more concussions on the Framingham High School girls soccer team mm -hmm. last year than there were the boys football team. Uh, do, do you run into that kind of a program? And, and do, you, do you have a kind of a strategy for avoiding that, or is it? A, uh, yeah. So as part of uh, at least for the for, to be a coach, mm -hmm. um, you would require, and so does the Mass Youth Soccer mm -hmm. Association require a concussion training. Uh -huh. It's an online training, uh, but it's really to look out for and recognize. Uh, the signs mm -hmm. of, uh, of a concussion. Mm -hmm. uh, in my experience, I've seen concussions happen from children tripping over the ball and falling on the ground. Right. Uh, to, from <laughs> sure. that to collisions. Because sure. uh, I mean, as you get up in age, soccer is an aggressive sport. Oh yes, right. Uh, you know, when you're going after children and uh, are going after 50-50 balls in the air, 
It's a it's a competitive it's shoulders, yep. it's elbows, it's shoulders, it's it's elbows, heads, heads. exactly. So, and, 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 and no one wears a helmet, right? Mm. Nope, no one wears a helmet in soccer. Uh -huh. yeah. nope. there are some uh, headband protection, uh -huh. right. uh -huh. uh, but a lot of elbow pads there. and knee pads and. No, well, the only no. thing that, that you need to play soccer is the Framingham United uniform, uh -huh. which you can pick up. We do it through the Natick Outdoor Store. Uh -huh. uh, uh, cleats, uh, shin guards, and socks. So, so that's basically it. By the time ball. I get done with that, is that 50 bucks? Is that? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's around there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, about $50. Little, uh -huh. Yeah, it's a little cheaper for so, the younger. It's a little less than ice hockey. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, yes. Maybe even baseball these days when I hear of $250 bats that people are right. buying. Yeah. Well, one thing that uh, the boosters decided to do was. Um, what was happening was coaches were coming and saying, I have all this old soccer equipment that my kids don't use oh, anymore. Uh -huh. They used them for half of a season because right. their feet grew. Mm -hmm. So um, myself and a couple of other parent volunteers got together and we created the Pass It On. Um, oh, how terrific. Yes, yeah, so it's all your gently used soccer equipment that your kids have outgrown. Mm -hmm. And we have somebody either come collect it or you can drop it at their house. Uh -huh. And we have a running list of what we have, sizes and everything, what you might need down to uniforms that they've outgrown, mm -hmm. cleats, shin guards, um, yeah, mm -hmm. anything. So we're really just, we're literally passing it on to somebody else mm -hmm. because right. if I had all the money back that we spent on little tiny cleats that were used for <laughs> one season. <laughs> yeah. And well, if you're on a travel team, you yeah. have a different shirt every year, presumably, right? right? And, and so, I mean, it's been very successful. Exactly. We have a link on the website uh -huh. um, where you Which can click on. Which all are eligible to pass down because you're. That's right. I was the extra large yep. shirt on the nine team last year. Who's the extra large shirt next year? Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Um, you know, as a soccer, as a sports fan myself, soccer is, I just talk a little bit about as fans. I, I've had a hard time becoming a soccer fan. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I suspect there's probably a lot of parents in Framingham who aren't soccer fans, and yet they, they'd like their kid to go out and play soccer. Do you, do you run into that a lot of, of, of the parents who aren't... Uh, you know, or a little puzzled by the game, or who sure. aren't uh, believers in soccer, or I mean, the international community here, I suspect, is a is a source of a lot of very well-educated parents in, for soccer. But I mean, uh, I never yeah. even th thought of sending my kids out to play soccer. <laughs> yeah, it's quite amazing. I mean, <laughs> soccer is one of the most popular, if not the most popular, sport on our planet. around the country, <laughs> around planet. the world. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, but yet, yeah. in the United States, it's always struggled. Yeah. I think uh -huh. it's improved with the uh, the women's professional league and with mm -hmm. the, the the men's professional mm -hmm. league, the MLS. Uh, but absolutely, I mean, when, uh, it's typically not on TV. It is now mm -hmm. more often yeah, on it's TV, getting there more, which is yeah. good. But don't be intimidated. My message to parents would be: don't be intimidated by the fact that you either didn't watch it, don't know a lot about it, or didn't play. Because the volunteers, uh, like myself and many others, right. played our whole mm -hmm. lives. And we understand mm -hmm. the game, and we under, understand how to mm -hmm. try to provide a positive experience for mm -hmm. the kids and mm -hmm. what we need to do. You know, our, the pre-K K program is our most important program mm -hmm. in our club. Huh. Without that program right. and teaching those kids the right fundamental skills, there's no... There's no future club. There's no. It's one of the more important bases for the high school soccer it's, team. Right? Exactly. It's the foundation. It's a foundation yeah, of right, the whole sure. club. And yeah. I'm glad you brought up the high school because it is. It's. Mm -hmm. It's. Uh, yeah, we are. 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 If we look at ourselves as the feeder for mm -hmm. the Framingham High School and mm -hmm. other high schools mm -hmm. uh, right. in the area mm -hmm. for for soccer players. Are Are there people from other than Framingham that play in your league? Or? Uh, there can be, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. and we can do a waiver process. Uh -huh. um, you know, so if a child goes to St. Bridget's uh, but lives in another town, or, or mm -hmm. you know, wants to play uh -huh. with kids that are mm -hmm. from Framingham. Oh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So there are uh -huh. there is the ability mm -hmm. to do uh -huh. that, especially mm -hmm. in the in town side. Mm -hmm. And uh -huh. we we have had some uh -huh. um, players from Ashland and right, yep. you mm -hmm. know, yep. the private schools, uh -huh. Montessori schools mm -hmm. that live outside of Framingham. Mm -hmm. now, now the New England Revolution. Uh, <clears throat> Um, are certainly a, the soccer professional force in Framingham. Do you have any connection at all with their program? Yeah, or? we absolutely do. Uh -huh. We have a connection mm -hmm. with uh, New England Revolution and the Boston Breakers. Mm -hmm. So we have a partnership with them uh, with uh, on, a t on tickets mm -hmm. so that we can provide tickets to uh, people in the club, Framingham uh -huh. coaches right. uh -huh. and people oh, in the club, great. and give uh -huh. that opportunity mm -hmm. to, to, for them to go at a uh -huh. discounted price. Uh -huh. And then we have uh, Framingham United Soccer Club nights each season 
at games. Okay. So we get, again, we offer up discounts. Yeah, I noticed that tickets. when I went to a couple of games there, I, there were a whole groups of people yeah. all yeah. in the same color shirts or whatever. Yeah. And so we have one it was upcoming, pretty impressive, yeah. One upcoming for the Boston yeah. Breakers. Uh -huh. uh, When's that going to be? And you have a date? or It's uh, yeah. pretty soon. It's, I think it's in a couple of weeks. Oh, okay. I want to say it's, I'm not uh, sure when this show is going to be on the air yet. And it may, may it, well, they may even repeat it in, in five years from now, for all I know. So. Yeah, but all, all <laughs> the information on those things are on our oh. Facebook page okay. or on our website. Uh -huh. right. So they're, okay. they're, they're, those, those events. And that are website Website again was fusc.org. Fusc.org. Yep. Yeah, that sounds uh, easy to remember. <laughs> yeah. So the one thing we did, I'll mention it quickly, with the New England Revolution, we get an opportunity to get in um, uh, to a game in the fall, usually in the fall. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, in the spring. And uh, we have a VIP tailgate area, and we get to, oh, the kids yeah. get to go into the Empire Fieldhouse where the Patriots oh. practice. Oh wow! And mm -hmm. kick the ball around for a few hours uh -huh. before uh, kickoff. Oh, that is so and, cool! And uh, the last two years we've done it has been tremendous success. So mm -hmm. you know, very discounted tickets, mm -hmm. so it's fe feasible for teams mm -hmm. to go and, mm -hmm. and youth to go. Uh -huh. Just a great time, and, and so that's that's basically uh -huh. our relationship with them. And of course, with the relationship, we have player. Appearances at our at our soccer fair uh -huh. and at our Memorial Day oh, tournament, uh -huh. uh, sign autographs, and, mm -hmm. and so the kids can mm -hmm. meet some of the players uh -huh. one on one as yeah. well. And so, last year we get running out of time here, but last shot for the Booster Club. Uh, anything that uh, as the, that the Booster Club is doing that uh, people of Framingham who are watching this need to know. Or? Well, we have a um, a couple of great things coming up. I mentioned the soccer okay. fair previously um, in um, February. We're going to have a comedy night fundraiser oh, really? yep mm -hmm. uh, at, at the Hampton Inn uh -huh. right over in Natick. Oh, yes, right. Yep. Um, we've done it the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Great comedian. It's been a really big success. Mm -hmm. um, so we've enjoyed doing that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, keep on our website for tickets mm -hmm. and we'll have posters up and we'll be selling, you know, tickets around town and everything. Mm -hmm. So it's a really great night and it's mm -hmm. for a really great cause. Uh -huh. Again, we're it's all about the kids mm -hmm. and everybody gets to play. So, so does the Booster Club raise a certain percent of the program budget every year? Do you have a target that you have to shoot for? Is it Not necessarily. No, uh -huh. no we do yeah. the very best we can mm -hmm. um, for the most through part, sponsors. It's and do, you, do you have a lot of sponsorships on this program? We have um, a couple of really great mm -hmm. sponsors. Are there any you want to brag about on the air? That, uh, <laughs> uh, maybe well, get we, some of their competitors? Or, uh, well, what other businesses in Framingham should be supporting yes, this great program? That's uh, right. Um, yeah. Well, we have PFE as one of our biggest. Um, sponsors Pre precision fitness equipment uh -huh. right down on Route 9 there okay. mm -hmm. um, they're always there for us for the tournament um, to you know if we need shirts whatever mm -hmm. the case may be they're wonderful mm -hmm. um, so go in and see them uh -huh. you're looking for fitness equipment uh -huh. um, and of course Dick's Sporting Goods always okay. very generous uh -huh. Um, helping us out outdoor with soccer balls and, and, and Natick yeah, outdoor yeah, stores, sports. wonderful, mm -hmm. always uh -huh. there for right. us. Uh -huh. um, so, well, yeah. But you don't have any of the auto dealers or uh, people like that or that are... Uh, we do. Oh, you do. We sure, the banks? We sure yeah. do. Oh, we okay. have um, well, Herb Connolly Chevrolet. Herb Connolly uh -huh. Chevrolet, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, Mutual One, uh -huh. and Mutual TD one. Bank. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Middlesex yep. Bank. Middlesex Bank. I don't know if we have to sex <laughs> okay. bank, but we're coming for right. you. Okay, we they're coming after <laughs> We're coming for you. There, so. That's right. Yeah, I'm going to get back at <laughs> That's my bank. So the, the, you know, the, the message Mind is, is that yes. uh, it's a great community to reach. Well, it is. No, a big, it, I a mean, big, a thousand players. Yeah. Uh, yep. And, and now with everybody watching this show on AFTV, it's going to be uh, That's right. something everybody's going to love. Well, our time is unfortunately up, but uh, I've really enjoyed talking to both of you. Maybe some uh, later on we can have a couple of players come in here. I'd, I'd love to get a couple of the four-year-olds in here. And, uh, yeah, that'd be that maybe, would be great. Maybe have a little demonstration <laughs> on the floor here of uh, blocking and tackling or yeah, something. Yeah, right. We would love to do anyway, that. Anyway, thank you, Candace. Great thank to you, meet Brian. you. Thank you, you so much. Yeah, thank pleasure. you so much for what you do. Yeah.